Needle calyx puncture is the crucial step of percutaneous user renal surgery. In fact, if the puncture fails, the whole procedure fails. Calyx puncture accuracy is mandatory to reduce tract complications. In the commonly used bullseye and triangulation technique, the C arm is rotated between 0 and 30 degrees. We present our experience of percutaneous calyxial puncture without rotating the C arm in the split leg modified lateral position. After anesthesia, the shoulder is fixed in a lateral position, then the pelvis is placed in the noblet position. The lower limbs are split and fixed in the lowest position, allowing simultaneous access to the upper and lower urinary tract. The C arm is placed between 10 to 15 degrees. The X-ray beam is perpendicular to the tract, thus the surgeon's hands are outside the field. It is similar to zero degree in the prone or supine position. This plane of the C-arm allows to monitor the craniocordal movements and the lateral medial movements of the needle. So how to know the position of the calyx in the anterior posterior plane? The needle is moved from posterior to anterior with progressive position variation. The orientation of the needle is maintained in the other planes and monitored with fluoroscopy. Since only the calyx is seen in fluoroscopy, the needle has to stay out of the hypothetical line of the parenchyma. In every position, small shaking movements are performed with the needle until the needle is in front of the kidney and the kidney moves to avoid trauma to the kidney. It is mandatory that the needle stay out of the renal parenchyma. Once the kidney and the calyx move, the needle is advanced through parenchyma. There is no risk of visceral injury posterior to the kidney. The same technique can be used in supine position. In the prone position, the movements of the needle are inverted from up to down. Lateral view in a glove model, the tip of the finger is used as calyx. The needle is aligned with the finger in the frontal plane. To locate the finger, the needle is moved progressively from down to up in the anterior posterior plane until the finger moves. Then the puncture is performed. The orientation of the targeted calyx is established by the needle outside the body. The needle is oriented from the intersection of the subcostal line and the posterior axillary line toward the calyx. The orientation of the needle is marked with betadine as ink. The needle is introduced in the same direction in horizontal fashion just above the posterior axillary line subcostally or between the 12th and 11th rib. The needle is moved from down to up with small incrementation. In every position a slight shake of the needle is performed until the kidney moves. Mostly just small amplitude movement of the needle are needed. When searching for the kidney, the needle have to stay outside the parenchyma line. If the needle moves beyond the parenchyma line, there is a risk of laceration or pushing the kidney anteriorly. This line won't be crossed until puncture through parenchyma and calyx is decided. When the needle is just in front of the parenchyma, a slight jiggle of the needle moves the kidney. To ensure that the needle is in the correct position, the calyx had to move with the parenchyma. Calyx will be pushed by the needle.
The needle is still outside the parenchyma. In this case, the kidney is moving but the calyx is not moving. The needle is not in front of the calyx. It shouldn't have been advanced. This time the calyx also moves and it is pushed by the needle. The needle is in front of the calyx. It is a good puncture. All the movements of the needle searching for the kidney and moving the kidney have to be outside the parenchyma. When the calyx is pushed, it is a sign that the needle is in the correct tract. Then the needle is pushed forward into the parenchyma and into the calyx. When the needle entered the parenchyma, only the forward movement is allowed and all the other movements are prohibited. Another precaution to ensure that the needle is through the fornix, the needle have to stop at the callus entry and not to be over advanced in the amphidibulum or the pelvis. If the needle is over advanced, it might have entered through the infundibulum or the renal pelvis, which is not recommended because the higher risk of complications. This puncturing technique has been used also in ectopic and malformed kidneys in pelvic kidney or sigmoid kidney Continuous fluoroscopy is performed during blind searching for the kidney mobilization and puncture of parenchyma and calyx most of the other steps are performed with economic snapshot fluoroscopy. The guide wire going down the ureter. To gain time and for less radiation exposure, even if the guide wire is coiled only in the pelvis or calyx, dilation of the tract is performed without any further maneuvers to put the guide wire down the ureter. Postoperative nephrostography gives feedback and shows the quality of puncture and that the puncture was through the fornix and calyx. The same technique of puncture can be used for other applications. In complete stenosis of the ureter pelvic junction, puncture of the opacified ureter and the ureter catheter through the amplats sheath and the renal pelvis wall. The guide wire is passed down the ureter. In a complete stenosis of the ureterophysical junction, a long needle is passed through the resectoscope sheath, the opacified distal ureter is punctured through the bladder wall. Then the guide wire is inserted. In our experience, this technique is easier to teach and to explain. Thus, many urologists and centers had mastered the calyx puncture and percutaneous renal surgery. <laughs>